Let's say you're working on a new wind turbine design that you're developing and the chances are because you're watching this video that's exactly what you're doing and of course the big question is well how good is it? And if your answer is well it's the number of amps that it outputs then you're in serious danger of throwing out the baby with the bathwater because a wind turbine remember is composed of three main parts. There's the wind catcher device itself then there's often a gearing system and then there's often a generator that turns that rotation into the electrical energy that you're after. And if you get a very poor output, you may well just throw the whole lot away in exasperation, but you equally may well have discovered the world's greatest wind capture device and have an absolutely rubbish generator and so thrown it away and made a terrible, terrible mistake. Because to measure the efficiency of a generator, well, that's not particularly difficult. Attach a known load, see what you get out, compare the two. Same with the gearbox, pretty much. Put something in that you know what it is, measure what's coming out, and you'll have your answer on efficiency. But this thing, how do you measure that? And what is it you want to measure? Well, what you want to measure, of course, is the turning force. How much force is being created when this thing turns? Because the whole job of this thing is to take the wind and turn it into a turning force. And, of course, that force is called torque. We need to measure the torque that this is actually producing. So, how do you do that? Well, surprisingly enough, it's not that difficult, but does need a little bit of setup. And here is my setup, and it's pretty straightforward. Here I've got a fan that blows out a certain volume of air at a certain speed. Here I've got a cradle, so when I put my new wind turbine design in, the wind turbine will be held here. At this point here, I've taken a wind speed meter or an anemometer, and I've measured that wind speed at that point there, which is 1.8 meters per second. That's one of the figures that we're going to need to know, and it'll blow across my turbine. All I've done is created this arm that I'm glue onto my turbine, and the length of that arm from the center of rotation to the end is 150 millimeters, and we need to know that. Glue it onto the end of your turbine, it's like that, and then it fixes in the axle there, and of course will press on the weighing scales here. Now the angle is another thing that we need to know, and in my case it's 45 degrees, because of course the force is acting directly along that line to the centre of the Earth, which is gravity. Here we're making an angle to that, and we need to know that angle. When the fans turned on, of course, the wind will blow, and it will try to turn that, and that will press on these scales, and we can measure the weight of what's being pressed, and that's another figure we need to know. So we need to know the angle, the length, and the grams that has been pressed there, and the wind speed that this is actually creating. And what we're measuring is static torque. It's static torque because there's no actual rotation. You can think of it as a stalled condition. It's the kind of the maximum torque that can be produced, but stop it rotating. Dynamic torque is where there is always rotation and change in speed as it rotates. So we're measuring static, not dynamic, but it can be an indication for us. So that's it set up. Turn on the fan, read the grams. A word of warning, this thing will wobble about a little bit, so you don't just do it once, you do it a number of times and take the average. In my case, I did it ten times and took the average of that. Sometimes the scale won't tar properly, in which case you take the initial weight from the finish weight, which happened to me a couple of times, and so clearly I'm just going to have to get a better set of scales. But that's what you do. So we got roughly 1.6 grams. Unfortunately, we need force. Fortunately, that's actually really easy. You just take mass in kilograms and multiply it by gravity in meters per second squared and you get the force in newtons. So in our case, we take 1.6, multiply it by 9.8 and divide it by 1,000 because we measured grams or kilograms and we get roughly 0.016 newtons and that was the force applied at the end of this lever arm. So, how do we use that to calculate torque? 
So torque is just RF sine theta. Now you can either plug your own figures into that equation or just find yourself an online calculator that will ask you for the length of the arm, which is R, the force that's been applied, which we worked out from gravity and the mass that was being produced on the scales, and the angle, in which case it'll work out sine theta for you. Sine theta is 0.7, we worked out the force as 1.6, and the radius, which is the length of the arm, is 150 millimeters. And you can plug all of that in, or you can calculate it yourself. And when you work that out, in our case, you get 0.0017 newton meters of torque, which doesn't sound like a lot, so is it any good? Well, a way of working out if it's any good or not is, again, to use an online calculator, but in this case, something like Omni Calculator, which works out the torque on a wind turbine blade for given dimensions. And this is why we took the wind speed, because the wind speed plugged into Omni Calculator will tell you the torque that's been developed by a wind turbine of any blade length. And if you do that, what you'll get is an answer like oh, 0 0.00003, which is obviously very much smaller than what we got. So either our new design is incredible, or we made some really hideous error, or there's a whole load of errors in the experiment itself. So to get some sort of comfort, what you can do is produce a box standard wind turbine blade, which is what I've done here, and this has the same swept area as our new turbine blade that we're working on, and so we can compare the two. We can put that in our rig and we can get another torque measurement which will cancel out a lot of the errors of the experiment and give us a measure of whether ours is any much better than this. So I put it in the same setup except it rotates in the opposite direction so the scale's on the opposite side. Let's turn on the fan and see what we get. So we got about 0.8 on that and about 1.6 on that. Now, don't go away with the idea that this is definitive. It, it isn't. I mean, there's a lot of things wrong with what we did. We really need to repeat it all again much more carefully. But then, of course, these are models. And so any error in this will compound along the line. A small error might be a big error when you get to the larger version. So you have to be kind of circumspect to a liberal degree. But it does give you an idea that what you're working on is probably worth pursuing. And in this case, it looks very interesting for sure. When we get to a larger scale, obviously we'd need to measure it again and again and again. Now, this is a lashed together home system for taking those essential bits that we need. And those essential bits that we need are the length of this rod, the angle it makes with the line to the centre of the earth, and the force that it applies on the scale. With those, we can calculate torque. Be a bit careful about the torque calculation you come out with, but it will give you a clear idea of whether what you've got in your hands is worth pursuing, any good or not. Anyway, I hope that helped. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe.